Welcome everyone, you found Sanctuary's Coffee and Conversation Show. My name is Myrna Haskell. I'm executive editor of Sanctuary Magazine. This is an online publication that empowers and inspires with a focus on the arts, philanthropy, health and wellness, culture and community. You can find us at sanctuary-magazine.com. This morning, my guest is Megan Nancy Buttenheim. She is an educator, an international presenter, and she is also the founding director and chief joy, I think it's chief joy officer, right, of Let Your Yoga Dance. Good morning, Megan. How are you this morning? Good, good morning. I'm so happy to be here with you. I love I know, your magazine. And I'm so excited about this topic. And I know listeners are thinking, let your yoga dance. Hmm. So our topic today is healing through joy and movement. And I know that I want to jump right into asking you about the inspiration behind founding Let Your Yoga Dance. And if you've also let our listeners know a little bit about your background, I know you have quite the interesting background in dance and yoga training and all of that stuff. So I'll just let you have the floor. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, I do have a, <laughs> a pretty big background. Um, I started out as an actor. I came out of the womb dancing and singing and thinking I was headed for Broadway. And um, But when I was 32, I left New York because I discovered this yoga ashram in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. And I actually thought, well, I'll just stay there for a month and be a spiritual lifestyle trainee. Well, that month turned into 12 years. Wow. <laughs> I know I lived I lived in an ashram which is a spiritual community for 12 years and what I loved about it was that the yoga was very movement based and if anybody in your audience has ever heard of Jose Limon, um, I used to train with Jose Limon Dance Company in New York and it was very fluid and breathful and I felt that this yoga practice was too. I thought, hmm, that's interesting. There was also a dance form there that was like a spiritual aerobics class and it was a lot of fun. But when I moved in, I thought, Hmm. I think I could do more with this dance form. So over the 12 years <laughs> I was there, I started teaching the form, but I also created my own and I called it Let Your Yoga Dance with I the two that. words. Well, let and your are actually the most important words because I want people to feel so comfortable in their bodies and to know that we're all dancers because when i was in new york or or anywhere when i was performing you know to take a gentle dance class it was really really hard and i know I, oh, I, right i right? know this well <laughs> Exactly. So I thought, no, 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 we got to get rid of that and just really let people wherever they are in their bodies to enjoy the practice and know that we are all dancers. So that's like one of my credos. And so Let Your Yoga Dance, uh, that, that title took a while for me to create because I really wanted, you know, yoga and dance combined and also Qigong practice, but also this sense of just loving where we are in our body, no matter what size we are, what gender, whatever. It's all So it's important. your yoga. Your, it's your it, yoga. Yes, that's I, right. I understand. You got it. You got it. So um, actually, I, I basically let your yoga dance is a, I like to call it a transformational movement practice where joy and fun meet deep and sacred. And the mission of our practice is to spread joy and consciousness throughout the world by transmitting body health, brain health, heart health, and soul health. To the whole all person. populations, to all mm -hmm. populations, exactly. And um, I, I, I coined the phrase healing through joy because I really feel that in the hour, I usually teach for about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. And in that hour and 15 minutes, we've got to get the body health, brain health, heart health, and soul health in there. And we also have to work through the chakras, the energy centers of the body. And that's to me what makes it really transformational because when we go through the centers of the body, the feet, the legs, the, the pelvis, and the third chakra is up in the solar plexus, and the fourth chakra is the heart and the throat, the sounding, letting yourself sing, and the third eye is all about dance prayer. And oh, then okay. the seventh chakra is, is all about deep meditation and relaxation. So when you put all of that together, 
you've got an incredible roadmap for consciousness and you'll feel better. And so there's nobody, I don't think there's anybody who's ever taken a class who didn't feel so much better and so much more joy. At and the it's end of not the work. It sounds like it's not work. You know how so, such a high percentage of our community out there thinks, oh, like, I know I need to get up and move and I know I need cardio yeah. exercise and all this stuff. And they think of it as a chore. And this That's just right. sounds like it's no chore. It's something you want to be doing all the time because it's going to make you feel so good all over in your mind and body. Yeah. That sounds wonderful. Absol absolutely. And, and, and in the third chakra, we do have brain health. So I do want to provide... Um, each student with an opportunity to work their hippocampus, get that brain engaged, their prefrontal cortex and everything. So we will do a little follow the leader, but I try to make it really simple and remind people, hey, you know, if this isn't your thing today, don't even think about do what works for you. And if you're sitting in a chair, or if you're lying down in bed, which some of my students, you know, they're, they might be ill, but hey, let me take the class anyway. And they can lie in bed and, and, oh, and yes. move their arms. Yeah, yeah, so. absolutely. I wish more people would do that that are immobile, you know, um, because <laughs> it is it is giving you something back when you're doing that, right? That's well, wonderful it, it, that you have people that are part of it that way. So oh, well, you're I, teaching in person as well as virtually, right? Not at the moment. Not at oh, the not moment. at the at the, well, at the at the moment. I'm teaching virtually, but I've 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 led in person most of my <laughs> most right. Of my life. Okay, so at the moment you're you're strictly doing the virtual classes. I'm, I'm then. Just doing virtual. okay, which right. makes you be able to reach everyone now, right? I know. One of, of my my two of my lovely students are in England, so they're going to come in later today. When I after this is over, I'm teaching my special populations class. My let your yoga yes. dance for special. I know we're going to talk and, about that a little bit more. I that's place. something yeah. that really caught my interest too. Yeah. I, you know, could you tell me a little bit about how your classes differ from a more traditional yoga type <laughs> class that a lot of, because I know a lot of my viewers take those types of classes. And yeah. so I want you to really dig in a little bit of how yours is different. Uh, it's 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 very different mm -hmm. and i just want you to know all the people who love yoga out in the sanctuary world i love yoga too and i teach it i teach yoga all the time i've now joined qigong with my practice so i do a little combination of chinese you, yoga uh, and for Indian me yoga. for me the qigong can you just um tell us just a tiny bit about that too because yes. i'm not real familiar with it i've heard yeah. of it but now that you you're probably incorporated you're probably familiar with Tai Chi. Yes. So Qigong is even more ancient than Tai Chi. It's okay. from China and it's very, very slow and meditative. So for me, it's the most beautiful dance of meditation in motion. And okay. you might, you might, you might do a practice on me just push this down a little bit. You might do something like this. This is called flowing motion. You might do this for five minutes, you know, and you inhale. And okay. actually, everything so is very, very meditative, slow. very meditative, very meditative that portion. And very yeah. slow. And I realized that in my sixth chakra part of the class of let your yoga dance, I can bring in that moving meditation. And in my regular yoga class, you know, I just go, okay, I'm weaving Chinese and Indian yoga together, which is lovely. But oh, okay. yes, a, a more a more traditional yoga class, you know, come into the mountain, the half moon, the goddess, all that stuff. And I do that. I do that. But let your yoga dance um, brings in a level of joy that I have never felt in a yoga class. I love yoga. It's fine. But we're getting very ballistic and energized. I'm not saying difficult, but we do go a little nutty. We, <laughs> we have a lot of fun in the class while we're doing some moving yoga. I actually bring in yoga poses and okay. turn it into dance. You know, so for example, we might be in the in the five pointed pointed star and then go into the goddess, but then I'll jazz it up. And we'll, we'll make it, it sounds quite like lovely. it can be for um, the folks who are taking your class more of like a release. You know, then oh, like, totally because weird. I've taken yoga before too, and I'm like concentrating, you know, I'm trying to think about, you know, my positions and everything. Same with Pilates, yeah. right? But this sounds like, yes, you're incorporating those things for core and all of that, but you're also 
I have to imagine you experiencing release in so many different types of way. And isn't that like a distressor, you know, and all of those things too, because so many people have anxiety and stress today. Right. So exactly. Exactly. And sometimes I've seen my students in yoga over the decades, you know, I've, pra- I've, I've been teaching yoga since what, 1982. And I often say to my students, especially when we're coming into a balancing pose, I go, you know, turn the corners of your mouth up and feel free to fall. It's fine to fall out of the pose because most people are holding this pose. And that's what I mean. Yeah. Right. Right. That's, and that's wonderful. not what this is. Oh if, my if you have to, if you have to choose, um, uh, let your yoga dance. The the dance is a really really big part of yes, the practice. Yes. Yoga's in there. Yoga's in there. Definitely, Yoga's in but, there. It but your wonderful. your heart is going to be beating, and you're going to be so effervescent and ebullient. And let me just say one more thing. I like to say that with let your yoga dance, you get a daily dose of joy and the dose stands for dopamine oxytocin serotonin and endorphins you'll get all of those happy hormones just flowing through you which that doesn't happen quite so much with yoga yeah i hope i'm not <laughs> insulting anybody <laughs> i know I i'm yoga. getting it say, no, i'm sure okay. the listeners are totally getting it okay. Nega, i wanted to dig in a little bit too because i know that you work with um folks struggling with parkinson's disease and other yes. challenges and 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 yes. movement challenges and all of that kind of thing so i want to hear a little bit more about your classes for people that have certain special needs you know or Thank mobility you. issues and if you can explain how you might like design those classes a little differently than just a traditional class when you don't have to worry about special challenges Totally excellent. And and basically, I in over so many of these last years, anybody who comes to my reg my regular class, I I I feel weird about saying that, but you know, when we do a lot of standing um in the regular class, but I get okay. a lot of people who are still having struggle. I mean, my gosh, if you're over 50, <laughs> I'm sure you got some issues. I just got a new hip for heaven's sake. So I'm a special population. So um, anyway, um, about, I don't know, this was uh, about 25 years ago in the ashram, there were people who were coming to my classes. They kept, after class, they would say one after another, I've got Parkinson's. And I went, really? Isn't that interesting? I didn't even know. So they were, you know, pretty able, but they said, you know, this class is like taking Cinemet. This class is like taking the, the, the Parkinson's drug without any of the horrible side effects. And the only side effect I feel is joy. And I literally looked up in the sky and I said, wherever the great mystery is, I said, yo, (laughs) are you trying to tell me something that I'm supposed to teach people with Parkinson's? Because I, I don't know about Parkinson's and I kept getting these people so I thought okay so I studied I studied with David Leventhal who became a dear friend who is now the director of dance for Parkinson's in New York Um, and we created a we co-created a class together up in the Berkshires of Massachusetts where I was and I've been teaching uh, let your yoga dance for Parkinson's ever since and what's interesting about it is that soon I other people would say well I don't have Parkinson's but can I come to the class anyway and I went oh sure everybody's welcome everybody's welcome. so I realized oh my heavens the things that I was really targeting for Parkinson's were also pretty great for other special needs yeah because, that's what I was thinking well for example people with Parkinson's can also can often have um trouble with swallowing because the throat can tighten up so we do a lot of <laughs> we do a lot of sounding and mo- i do an ice cream dance where they're pretending they're eating ice cream and mm, swallowing it and it tastes delicious okay. but it's also a dance so i take a lot of, of physical therapy exercises was, that would yeah. be found in parkinson's and then dance it up this, but, but at the same time, we're still dancing through these energy centers so that I know that we're going to be doing a song that's going to open up their heart. We're going to do singing, lots of toning. We own people with Parkinson's and anybody else. I mean, the research is out now that, you know, if you sound and tone, it really affects the brain in the best kind of a way. Just, you know, that yogic beehive breath. Mm, you know, if you start humming, 
it'll make a difference. So I, all the time I'm learning and growing and figuring out, you know, going to different Parkinson conferences to teach or to just learn and then just bring it back into the group. And we're in chairs for the most part. I was just going to ask about the chairs. Wow. I, we must be connected on this show because I was picturing when you're talking about it. So for people whom are actually in a wheelchair most of the time, they can also do this with you, right? One of, one, of, one of my best graduates of my teacher training, my special populations training, she lives in a wheelchair 100% of the time. And oh boy, is it fun to watch her dance. It's incredible. I don't only teach people with wheelchairs. I teach, it's a big broad it's spectrum. A, yes, it's a broad and spectrum. I'm getting so that, some, yes. Some people are a little more spry. And if they are spry, now this is the, I think the difference between, you, you'll hear about chair yoga and chair this and chair that. What I say with let your yoga dance, um, I call it gentle style. You okay. Know, the, the gentle style. Um, it's in and around chairs. So anybody who can get up, I want them to get up. I don't want them to sit in a chair the whole time if they can get up. Okay. So that's why I always like to invite their friends and caregivers to the class so that they can be on hand. And, and the caregivers, of course, that's a whole other situation. Of they need a lot of care and support oh, too. Yes. And, and this Absolutely. class will help them. This help class will give them a little more joy rather than all the stress of. So you it's know, very individualized. It sounds like you're able to actually do that within one class. I, have I it can. be very individualized based on the person's ability of movement. Right. right? And I'm at presently I'm teaching three private classes. Some people don't want to be in a group. They feel like I don't want to be with other people sometimes. Okay. But then the other people love the group because it, it, it's. I mean, there's no question. It's again, a collective are, joy when it's a group. It's a, to a certain, right. Besides it right. being inside of yourself, right? That's right. And Kelly McGonigal of the Joy of Movement talks a lot about collective joy. And it is true. And Barbara Fredrickson in Positive Psychology talks about, you know, when you're together with other people and, and, in, and she loves this work, by the way, she's seen my classes, that it's broadening and building this spiral of positivity resonance and so it is wonderful to be together my feeling is whatever you can do whether it's one-on-one -on -one or whether you're in a group this will bring a little more healing through joy for you what do you tell um i'm assuming it's just like loose clothing but i know from <laughs> going to your website and some photographs i have everyone's dressed for joy because they're in all these beautiful <laughs> colors and everything. So is there, what do you, what do you tell you folks, you know, what to well, wear, like just comfortable absolutely. clothing? Absolutely. Like, and do they just add the color because they feel good? You know what I mean? Well, probably what you were seeing on my website were some of my grads, my graduates from Let Your Yoga Dance teacher training who are then going out and teaching this to the world. And, you know, we have, we this is sort of my uniform, Let Your Yoga Dance. This is the Dancing Ohm logo that we have, which, you know, Dancing Ohm. But it is fun to have colors. And of course, the chakras, these energy centers that I keep telling you about, have colors associated with them. And I let, love to use Oh, scarves. that I didn't know. I don't, I, I I know about yeah. chakras because we've actually had articles in the magazine and we've talked about it here and there, but I didn't know that colors were associated with the different. Oh, chakras. yes. I won't, I won't bore you with that. That's but... one of my favorite colors you've got right there. Well I, can, well, I can see it. See, you are, you are in the root chakra. You are today, you are grounding your feet into the planet because the first chakra is all about in the color red, like I call it Mississippi mud. And so oh! your, feet, <laughs> your, your feet and your legs right up to your tailbone is the first chakra and so okay. that's why we're really grounding ourselves we need to ground on this earth and not you know, like sometimes i think of yoga oh here i go i'm dissing yoga again but i'm not interested in creating space cadets you know so they go out of class like this i want them to remember to ground into the planet mr iyengar the great yoga teacher always used to say yoga is not about learning how to stand on your head it's about learning how to stand on your own two feet oh, and that, that is that is the first chakra and then you know the the second chakra is orange i won't go through the whole thing but it's so much fun so a lot of people dress 
for maybe they want to focus on one particular chakra or they want to do a rainbow. Oh, it's that's like, cool. I yeah, like that. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, I, I heard you, I was going to ask you specifically about healing through joy, but I think we've got that. <laughs> yeah, I thought, <laughs> it works. I'm telling you, you just have to experience it yourself. It, like it's a hundred percent. One Sometimes I have gone into a class and I'm going, oh, I'm miserable. You know, something just happened and I'm having a terrible day. At the end of the class, I'm like, come you to me. You feel great. <laughs> yeah, so, so, I, so I'm, I'm feeling that whole thing just from you talk about it, about how it works your mind and your body. We always talk about that. But this sounds like it really encompasses that ideal of everything being connected and the healing that you're doing is everywhere from your toes to your head, right? It's everywhere. And so I have to believe that people that leave the class feel sort of lighter and almost like, you know, more loose, you know, from all of the stretching and just, they probably walk out a little bit more peppy than they walked in. Whereas we oh. talked about in the very beginning, some of these traditional dance classes you and I both used to take back in the day, you came out like you were, you know, <laughs> hurting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, then people don't, can't get hurt. And, and by the way, no injuries are allowed in my classes ever, because there is this constant reminder of doing the movements that suit your body, let and that your feel good for you. yoga dance. But, but I just want to just add in the, to me, what is the most important part of the class? And that is dance prayer. And some people don't like the word prayer. You could say dance meditation if you want. So towards the end of the class, when we've gotten so rambunctious through the heart and the, the throat chakra singing, sometimes we'll do West Side Story across, you know, oh, like uh, boy, boy, <laughs> crazy boy. You know, you never know what is going to come. I have tons of songs from all around the world, but then we quiet down. And I like to say, you know, I mean, there's so many different kinds of dance prayer, but this is where you go inside, you go back to the yoga, but it's moving yoga. And sometimes I'll just put on a beautiful piece of music that's very quiet. And I'll say, now just let your yoga dance now. You might even close your eyes. Don't pay attention to anybody. Nobody's looking at you. And just let your own soul just uh. dance. So that's remember body health, brain health, heart health, and soul health. So sometimes I just give the song away so that they can do whatever their soul so that's is like wanting to. That's like to a quieting down, or I know in traditional exercise we call it a cool down, but well, right. you're quieting do. everything down after the that's joyful, right. more excited part. Right. Well, I do the cool down. I do, I, I do what I call the, the dancing yoga cool down before the dance prayer and that for the be, meditative um, part yeah. yeah i do i i created the moon salutation many many decades ago instead of the sun salutation everybody's doing the sun sal salutation but what about the moon the divine sacred feminine so i do a a lovely moon salute very quietly that they follow and then after that i'll do the dance prayer so then people are really really quiet and then we do a relaxation so do you so, teach all ages I I am not at this moment teaching all ages, but a lot of my graduates are. So okay. I can't I can't I can't do everything. <laughs> no, I'm, I know I'm, it's like, well. It sounds training. like just one class is because it's so individualized, well, you know. Yeah. No, so no, you're, so what are, what are you are like what what are who 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 is who can sign up for your classes? Like, what are sort of your yeah. who are you well, focused on in terms of demographics? So, so anybody can sign up and even even younger people come. But again, if they're really little, I'll send them off to some of my graduate okay. teachers who, who do. So people can contact you, you if they are looking oh. for something. OK, good. Yeah, we've got we've got all the demographics. Um, and, and I say we because I'm not a one woman show here. I've got a big community. Let Your Yoga Dance is also a community of of dancers and practitioners and, and you train and i you know I, train I wanted to close with that maybe i want to give give yeah. you an opportunity to take a minute or two to explain to listeners what your services actually are because i know you're also training you. others to That's become right. instructors so take a little bit of time to just you know, right. fill us in on that 
All right. Well, I I do have, you know, one of my prides and joys is my training, which I've been doing since 1997, and it just keeps getting better. It's called Let Your Yoga Dance Teacher Training. And okay. the next one, the next one's coming up in October. And that is for anybody. Um, you know, if you, you don't have to be a yoga teacher, um, I, I, you know, I advise start taking some yoga and I've got some freebies on my website. You know, I've got some lovely yoga classes. Oh, we all love classes. freebies. So that's great. Yeah. So my, my website, letyouryogadance.com, you can actually go and get some free things. Um, and listeners, will have that up too. On yeah. the show. And so I've got my Let Your Yoga up. Dance. We'll that up yeah. Too. And I have my, yep. my MP4 and DVD and my book. Oh, oops, that's not my, that's my manual. <laughs> I've got my expanding, yeah. Okay. My expanding joy. So I've got a lot yep. of different things. And then I teach um, classes like I'm about to, when we say goodbye, I'm going to just turn around and teach my special populations, let your yoga dance. And then um, on Thursdays, I teach gentle yoga and qigong practice at two on Thursdays. Oh, that sounds Eastern nice. Time. Okay. Oh, it's so sweet. I love that class. And then um, uh, on Saturday mornings at 11, I teach a regular good old let your yoga dance class. And okay. that is so much fun. And sometimes I invite some of my grads or one one or two grads to come and, and join in the fun so that they can see let your yoga dance. Nobody teaches the way I do. I don't want them to teach the way I do. I want them to be their best, beautiful self. And that's so. that's going back to what you expect of those who are taking your classes, too, that right. they're going to feel right. like it's their own. So that makes sense. That's right. Let your yoga dance. Exactly. Oh, I it. love that. I love that. Yeah. Oh, I, I know that listeners got a lot out of this and they're going to go okay. and check out your website and learn more from right. this because this is Thank wonderful. You. And, you. Um, you know, thank you so much for sharing this. Oh, I mean, pleasure. this is just wonderful. I mean, I when I first heard about you, I didn't realize that there was anything like this. You know, I knew about, obviously, about yoga classes and those kinds of things and traditional dance. But now that you're, you've transformed all of this into, it's a little bit yeah. of everything. You're meditating, you're, it's all about self, you're dancing. Yeah. You're, it's, I, I love it. It's, it sounds Thank like a you. wonderful, wonderful practice, Megan. I really appreciate you sharing it with our audience today. So thank you. Well, I appreciate being with you. You're like a light bulb. You're a sparkleberry. It's so much fun. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Meg. I really you're appreciate so it. I'll close as I always do by wishing all of of our listeners and our readers good health happiness and continued inspiration thanks so much for joining us today thank you